Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. Today I wanted to give you a little insight as to what prompted me to go ahead and start this CPU Showdown series. To start things off, I just want to give you guys a little background. Joe and I are not what we would consider super enthusiasts. We'll generally get the X70 series GPUs uh, on NVIDIA side or the AMD equivalent if, you know, price to performance is just an AMD's favor at that particular point in time. And for the most part, we will generally use an older CPU. I mean, right now I'm running the uh, i5 4690K, and Joe just upgraded from his X58 platform, his uh, i7 940, he just upgraded to the 6700K. So Joe usually goes for the long haul, and I like to upgrade every year or so, uh, maybe every two years, and I generally go with i5 CPUs. Recently, I've noticed that reviewers have been using very high overclocked CPUs to test their GPUs. So when the 1080 came out, I didn't see anybody running a CPU under 4.5 gigahertz, and nobody was running anything but an i7. Granted, this is the type of CPU you would think to pair with such a powerful and expensive GPU, but a lot of people don't have i7s. There's still a large majority of people still running the i5-2500K because, honestly, CPU advancements have been pretty lame lately. I mean, to say the least. We've been getting anywhere between 5-10% to 10 generational upgrades, and that's just not a lot. G on the GPU side, we're jumping up 50-60% to 60 every generation. Now, CPUs seem to come out about every year. That's uh, Intel's sort of plan there. They come out with one every year. And GPUs tend to come out every 18 months, so this has bought Intel a lot of time. But now the GPUs are starting to get to the point where I think they're overtaking CPUs. And what prompted this is I noticed that in Witcher 3, I would hit 100% CPU utilization frequently. And this is using a GTX 970. So using something that's 50 to 60% more powerful, like a GTX 1070, I can't even imagine how much bigger of a bottleneck that CPU will become. So I decided, I was like, well, let's start at the beginning. There's a lot of people still using the X58 platform and first-gen core series CPUs. So I went ahead, jumped on eBay, found a good deal on, a, on an Asus P7 P55D-ELX motherboard. I'm going to put an actual graphic on the video because that's just a really long name right there. So if you guys want to check it out. Um, but it's a P55 motherboard, so obviously it has all the overclocking features that we would need to go ahead and get, you know, standard overclocking numbers off of this. The CPU was a little bit more of a challenge because I kind of wanted things to be a baseline. So using a P55 motherboard, most overclocking is done using B-clock. Now, if you're new to... PC overclocking, you probably don't know what B-clock is, or frontside bus. This is probably new to you. So I decided to go ahead and wait, and I found a really good deal on an i7-875K CPU. With this CPU, I'm able to go ahead and keep the base clock at stock, and then I can just go ahead and change the multiplier like current CPUs are. This is important because I didn't want the RAM to be too different. Because I, in our other benchmarking video, I demonstrated how important RAM can be. And obviously, I'm going to go ahead and continue on with this in this video series. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our i7-875K. And we're going to go ahead and benchmark it at both 4 GHz and 3.5 GHz using all three graphics cards, which will be the GTX 670, 970, and I have a GTX 1070 on the way. I got very lucky. I got a gift card from work for winning a contest, and uh, that covered most of my 1070. So, as I've said before, I personally would never spend this kind of money on a GPU normally. However, I happen to get very lucky, and honestly, I really wanted to make this video for you guys. Because if you are running these older CPUs, is it even worth upgrading to one of these? And this could save a lot of people a lot of money if the benchmarks indicate that older CPUs are just not gonna cut the mustard. Now, to test Core i5s, this is pretty straightforward, especially on the first gen series, because the i5 still had an eight meg cache. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Core i7 and we're going to disable hyper-threading. Now, you wouldn't think this makes a big deal, 
but I'm going to throw it out there. With preliminary benchmarks, it is a big deal. Um, you guys will see that here shortly. I'm just going to let you know that there is a big difference between i5s and i7s, especially when CPU becomes a bit of an issue. And I haven't even tried it with the 1070 yet. Well, guys, I just wanted to give you a little insight as to why I'm doing the video. The main reason is I just don't want you guys to go out there and spend big money on video cards that are going to yield little to no performance gain for you. Now, if you are running an older platform like the X58 platform uh, or 1156 or 1155 platform on the Intel side and want to buy something like a GTX 1070 or a 1080, you can do that, but just realize you're probably going to need to upgrade your platform in the near future. Alrighty guys, if you like these kind of videos, please hit the like button. Please comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and share with your friends and your family. That really helps us out. Alright, well I hope you guys enjoy it. I can't wait to show it to you. And once I get the 1070 in here, I'll go ahead and get all the benchmarks done. And we'll get up all the video for you here in the near future. Alright, I hope you guys have a great day. And we'll catch you around.